This video is made for adult collectors because giant scary purple Barney T-Rex thingy. So I really like Transart's Optimus Primal, and after the video release, the toy sold out on TF Safari, which I thought was neat. It's back up now for those who want it. It's still on sale too. But they have sent over the companion piece to that Primal, and it's nice, just not as good as Primal. The problems are minor, but they are there, and they're a bit more annoying than they were on Primal, but that's also because there's a lot more toy here than that original one. Before I go any further, this was provided to me by TF Safari. They have a wide range of knockoff and third-party stuff with the occasional official item from Haztac. While this guy isn't on sale, his retail price is actually cheaper than Primal's retail price. And yeah, that's hella worth it. Plus, there are other Transart toys on sale here. So definitely go check them out. Links in the description down below. Obligatory shot of this combiner and me saying I want it so bad. And if you use discount code that toy guy special 3% off, yes I know, you'll save an extra couple dollars on any purchase, which is always nice. Thanks for sponsoring this video, now on to the actual toy. Look at how big this thing is! It's huge! And it looks so good, the metallic finish is so lush, the black is nice and deep, and the purple is very vibrant. But that's where the chipping happens. So on the feet, they're die cast. Painting die cast is not always the best because it's going to chip and here it has out of the box. Like, this just was like that when I opened it. Right on the toes here and the knuckle closest to the hinge. And that's because to transformation into transmetal mold, you fold the feet up. And that little knuckle scratches up against this gunmetal ball down here and it chips the paint. It's a shame because I love transmetal mode and I don't want to do it because it's going to chip the die cast. I am very surprised by something though and that is the lack of heels. So this guy uses his transmetal wheels to be stable, and with this massive backpack, I'm pleased to say it's actually super stable. Yes, some poses make him fall over, but like standing straight and being dynamic, he's pretty solid, so I'm super glad for that. And they're wheels for his heels, and he still stands. You can deploy the VTOLs, but that just looks weird. He does come with a bunch of stuff. Spare fingers to make the finger guns, but I'm scared I'm gonna lose them so they stay in their baggy. You get two tails, which I don't like, and I'll explain why in a little bit. A blast effect, two extra faces that go in the tail. So the tail can latch onto the arm using these spring-loaded tab things that aren't the best connection, and it likes to come off. And I don't like the fact that he has two tails. Because it means you have to carry one with you at all times if you want to transform him, because the tails are specific to each mode. The reason they do this is because the bigger tail is more proportionate to the dinosaur body than the smaller one. Like, it looks better. But the byproduct of that is having to carry around an extra tail everywhere you go when you have this figure. Because if you want to transform it, you got to swap the tails around. And one of my friends says, why didn't they just go for like an in the middle thing? Like a medium sized tail or maybe like an extending tail? That would have been nice. But no, they gave you two, which is a bit annoying. So the articulation. Oh, there's also one thing I forgot to mention about the accessories. Is he comes with this little saw. Um, I kind of wish that this wasn't like this. I wish that this little dingle dangle here had like four and then a clear disc to go around because then it would stay and it would look good on a display because this, this looks terrible on a display. Anyways, articulation on this guy is actually very, very good for what he is considering. This was just sort of fine, I guess. Like the range of motion, like he had all the joints, but the range of motion on those joints just was okay in some areas. But this... Has a lot of cool stuff. Unfortunately, he has tabbing issues that relate to the articulation, and it's very, very annoying. So the first thing you have here is you have the head. It's on a ball joint, but it can't really look up that far. You can only look down that far, left and right. This is also version 2.0, so these are painted. The eyes are painted. There's no LEDs in this at all. There's also some other minor paint changes on this, but yeah. Uh, so you got the head. The shoulder pads can move in and out. They can also rotate. Now here's where the tabbing issues happen. This section right here pegs into this panel. But this panel's on a bunch of, it's like several hinges and it's slightly shifted down. Like it doesn't line up properly with the, with the peg. It's actually already come untapped. So you move the arm, you're like, oh great, let's go bicep swivel. It's untapped. And you just gotta peg it back in, bicep. Peg it back in, but mm, see, it, it just, it doesn't like staying in place. 
That is very annoying. So you're gonna have to hold it here to activate the bicep rotation. Uh, shoulders can go out that far. You do have double jointed elbows, which is nice. Wrist rotation and three finger trigger finger split with a thumb on a ball joint. You already know how that works. I'm not gonna bother detailing it. it does have a waist joint. Not the nicest sounding ratchet in the world, but it's a ratchet. Hips, forward, back. The ratchet can actually hold the die cast quite well. It doesn't feel like it when you're moving it, but when it gets into a position, it stays. Well, most of the time it stays. There you go. You got thigh rotation, 90 degree knee bend, and then the feet can go forward and the heels do move with it, but when you move the foot down, it doesn't seem to do it manually. But it's not bad. And then the tails. Come on, man. There we go. It's all ball jointed. Now, if you notice, I'm holding the tail attached to the arm, because if I do this, it just comes right out. So that's a little unfortunate. Kind of wish it was a little bit more secure of a connection. I really wish it would just like plug in as opposed to using these like clippy doos. But the other tail, it also has the same amount of articulation and ball jointed segments. It's like an SH Monster Arts tail. Kind of, oh. See, like an SH Monster Arts, it comes apart. And then the claw opens and closes. Ah. So the robot is awesome. I love the way everything looks and feels. I just wish it pegged together a bit better and didn't chip. Now the dinosaur transformation is basically just like the original without the snapping in half part, because I believe it actually wasn't GPS. It says on the wiki exactly what it is, but it was like a very thin piece of plastic in the middle that would just break. Uh, this doesn't have that issue, thankfully. So, yeah. So, we're just going to get him into Tyrannosaurus Rex mode. Um, getting this backpack unclipped and clipped back in is annoying. So, I recommend grabbing it from the purple part here. And then grabbing it right at, like, just, just above the hinge. You don't want to pull out the hinge because you could break the hinges off. And just sort of yank it out. It's very tight. It's also paint chipping the clip. But I, it's the clip. I don't care. Then you bring these out. Because they're going to untab anyways. And then the hands. The hands, you want them folded forward, folded up and over like that. Bring the thumb in, forward, up and over. Rotate the thumb in, if it's not correct. And then fully bend the elbows, both joints, so that it's like that. Because otherwise, it won't fit into the torso. Now you want to fold the dinosaur head out, pull it, extend it. Bring it up and over like so. And then rotate the hands inward. They don't tab together, kind of wish they did. These are supposed to come and cover the hands and tab in together like so. But as you can see, again, not the most secure tab in the world. It just comes apart. Especially when you like push on it or pick it up, it just likes to come apart. And I just noticed it's paint chipping right there. That's fun. Then you want to bring this section down. <clears throat> Excuse me. Peg it in. Now here, here's where there's another tabbing issue. Because these tabs are, these ports, sorry, are slightly lower than what they should be, you kind of have to wiggle these into place. It's really annoying to do. There we, oh no, I folded that in. No. Can I get my pinky in there and just push it? Yes, I can. Haha. -ha. But that, that part's kind of annoying. You just fold up the hands and then just sort of bring this up on its double hinge, folded like this. And then this just comes down and we'll peg into there and there. And then the tail is on two little springy things. You just sort of springy thing it in place, peg it into the three pegs. And the knees. T-Rex. This is a glorious dino mode, and it's massive. Like that's a that's a that's a big Grimlock next to it. Love the chrome head, bro. It's so accurate, and the proportions are awesome. The tail is bigger, and this is why you have to swap them. But it, again, it's just annoying they have to leave one of them behind all the time. Kind of wish there was some storage, but eh. The dyno mode hip panels do articulate out to allow for leg movement out. I just wish the legs could move forward a bit more. That way they aren't as static. The tail is super poseable. I love how like free it is. 
it's just a nice dinosaur mode. Like, I love this, and I, this is definitely how I'm displaying it. But he has a third mode. I'm using huge air quotes here, but you can't see that. Roller skating VTOL Tyrannosaurus Rex with purple head mode with actual suspension and die cast wheels, which means pain. You may scratch the surface you're rolling it on. Ben, I love this thing. The, hand, the hands are super articulated too, which is cool. I definitely recommend buying one. It's so fun. Yeah, it's got tabbing issues, but overall it's still super cool. There's also an ab crunch in robot mode that I forgot to show off. Um, but he has an ab crunch. And for the price and the size, I think it's super good, all things considered. Better than the official one's price, which is nice. It also doesn't break like the official one. Again, thanks to TF Safari for shooting this my way. It'll be linked down in the description below. And that has been my look at TransArt's Beast Wars Megatron. Follow me on Twitter and Instagram, and I will see you next time. Bye-bye.